So to, to start out, cloud is a, a pretty diverse topic right now. There's a lot of marketing going on. Um, and for the end users, and even for the vendors, it's probably very confusing. Uh, this slide represents some of that confusing, as well as some of the definition that's out in the world. Uh, we stole some information from some blogs, so you see that on the, the bottom left and the upper right in the center and the, uh, the black square box. That's the Wikipedia definition of the cloud stack. Um, and there's various representations of, of suppliers of cloud technologies in there, from Amazon to Google. Um, the, these are all uh, sort of confused in a lot of people's minds. Uh, and especially from the end user, how are we supposed to analyze this? How are we supposed to prepare for it? One thing that happened while we were collaborating uh, was that one of our cloud technologies that we were using, which was email, uh, failed on us. So um, it stopped our collaboration a little bit. We had to work around it, but that's, that's a risk of the, the cloud game, is that uh, you're, you're moving your service someplace else potentially. So the group was responsible for um, representing the end users and determining um, how we can prepare for cloud offerings. Uh, what technologies and, and services would we be consuming and um, how are we gonna be able to, to look at those? Uh, for, for the vendors, uh, how are you gonna able, enable us to actually adopt those technologies? What products can you bring to market um, that will make that transition easier for us? So the, the first part of this is definition of what we want from the cloud from end user perspective. Um, and a lot of this is, is expectation as well. So uh, burst capacity or a sudden expansion in your data center capacity uh, versus what you have today. Um, variable performance-based capacity in, in a data center. Um, so a lot of dynamic and expandability options. Um, we, in retrospect, also like to reduce that capacity as, as quickly as possible um, when we no longer need it. The assumption is this will lower IT costs, uh, so only pay for what we need. Uh, we want to solve some technical skills gaps in there. Um, if you're a new company, uh, this could enable our startup costs to be very low. Uh, we want to use cloud technologies to address some inefficiencies in our environment. We want to be able to arbitrage from different service providers, so have a, a similar technology offering for two different cloud vendors, um, in addition to doing some sustainability efforts. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean it's all external to the currently owned data center by a corporation. It may be internal and external or both. There's different perspectives that can bring, be brought to the cloud um, depending on who you are. Uh, so a data center facilities manager would be someone who is responsible for the physical infrastructure, the real estate planning around the data center, um, and they uh, may not be um, released from the aspects of cloud that they'll be burdened with. Uh, a service provider, whether you're doing that internally or externally, is also going to be affected by cloud technologies. Uh, a user, of course, would, would be affected. Um, and those who are worried about risk and uh, security um, have a lot of concerns around cloud. These are just roles that we brainstormed. Um, there's probably a lot more that you can think of. So some key areas of concern around cl cloud, and these are, these are groups grouped together slightly. Um, so we really need a description of service. If we're gonna compare offerings between two different cloud providers, um, we, we need a description to analyze if it's mobile, um, to analyze what we're getting for the workload that we're, we're establishing in the cloud. Um, can these cloud technologies really solve the problem we're trying to address? Security, confidentiality, major concerns in this, this area. Uh, how do you secure your data versus taking it out of your own brick and mortar? Or keeping it in your brick and mortar and exposing it in a different way? Uh, availability, how do you uh, establish tiering in a cloud environment, capacity management, cloud services? Um, how do you provision in these new environments versus what you do now? And that uh, can fall between the physical footprint all the way out to the IT areas. Um, governance, um, how do you invest in these technologies? Is it going to be proprietary? You're going to be locked into one. Um, your architecture on how to provide that. And of course, how to charge for it all, whether it is internal or external or both. So we had some great top takeaways for this. Um, we need that service description in order to evaluate agnostically across offerings. Um, how do you compare services between one cloud provider and another one? Um, how do you migrate between those? Uh, there's a lot of needs in there about uh, describing that service and what it provides you. The governments, governance around this, can you just take your own corporate credit card and affect your corporate's cloud um, by buying additional capacity when you need it? Um, or is there a need to funnel that through an organization internally that may, may or may not be IT? Uh, 
So there's, there's a need to establish that. Um, we, we colloquially talked about adding storage to an Amazon service because you needed to. Um, where is that control at? Does it need control? Um, measuring the abilities of your cloud offerings would also be in this area where um, are you really getting for what you're paying for? Um, is that, that uh, SLA that you're looking for of data transfer uh, apparent? Um, that would drive right into costs. Uh, understanding the costs and baking those off across one another, whether you're talking about your own data center or multiple data centers out in the U.S. or across the world, um, how do you evaluate, evaluate the cost between those cloud offerings? Uh, security and data, I already mentioned some of these, but um, th those are very key. How do you keep your data secure? What if you have regulations around a uh, high-risk um, piece of information that you can't take out of the country or that you need deleted if it uh, mobilizes between one data center to another or your internal data center? Yeah. And this drives uh, even a more uh, uh, detailed issue, and that's how do you understand the whole cost of ownership of these solutions from the bottom up, from your real estate investment in your own data center all the way up to your IT stack to what the cloud offers. Because you're really gonna be comparing services of what you have invested in internally from a capital and operational expense to these external ones where you're looking for these uh, short-term offerings or even long-term offerings. Some of the, the things we want to accomplish in the next couple of weeks is uh, not only publish these findings that I'm presenting to you today, uh, but also poll our constituents for, for more information. What are, what are the concerns that we may not have uh, captured? Um, establish who this really represents in the industry. Is it, is it all sectors? Is it all markets? And, uh, and look to improve these findings already. Uh, we had some great collaboration from um, uh, India and, and the UK on, on uh, the information here. So uh, this was just a short time frame. So we'll let people look at it a little bit longer and, and expand upon it. I mentioned the stack earlier. And this graph, even though it's a little bit of an eye chart, represents uh, a stack that we're looking at. Uh, as a p potential um, model that people can look at. So it, it captures the real estate, the physical, the, the IT platform, and the applications that are involved in a cloud technology that you would have to look through to understand those costs and needs. Um, is it flexible? Can you rapidly provision? Um, how can we represent this out from an end user point of view to understand cloud offerings? That was my talk, thank you. <laughs>